If you're chronically online like me, you may have come across a recent story about an aquarium stingray that became pregnant without any other stingray being present in its tank. A mysterious stingray pregnancy has baffled the staff at the aquarium in North Carolina. That's because that facility has no male stingrays. Scientists have offered two possible explanations. The stingray named Charlotte may have been impregnated by a shark in her tank, or she's going through a very rare process where her eggs developed on their own without fertilization, essentially creating a clone of the mother. The stingray named Charlotte seems to have baffled scientists with her miraculous pregnancy. Some of the public have speculated that Charlotte may have been impregnated by the only other probable mate in her tank, a small shark. The real answer is, unfortunately, not a shark-stingray hybrid. It is, however, just as strange. This is the story of how Charlotte the stingray impregnated herself. Before getting into the details of self-impregnation, I wanted to clarify why a shark-stingray hybrid is extremely unlikely. That idea is like a wolf and a lion mating, which considering one is a dog and the other a cat is pretty inconceivable. A shark and stingray mating would actually be even more unbelievable than that. The last common ancestor of cats and dogs lived around 45 million years ago, while sharks and stingrays diverged around 300 million years ago. So despite speculation of a crazy hybrid species, that's not the likely answer. So how did Charlotte get pregnant? In one word, parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis, literally meaning virgin creation in Greek, is an asexual reproduction in which a female can produce an embryo without fertilizing an egg with sperm. Sexual reproduction, typical to humans, stingrays, and other animals, requires an egg cell and a sperm cell. Each provides half the genetic information necessary to create a living organism. The question then is, how does a mother reproduce without the sperm cell? Bear with me here, I'm quickly going to cover some reproductive biology, apologies to those like me who struggled to learn about it in school. See, ovaries produce eggs through a complex process called meiosis, where cells replicate, reorganize, and separate. These eggs contain only half the mother's chromosomes, with one copy of each chromosome. There are byproducts of meiosis called polar bodies. In animals that undergo parthenogenesis, there is a process called automixis, where these polar bodies merge with an egg to create an offspring. This shuffles the mother's genes so that the offspring is similar but not quite a clone of the mother. For most organisms that reproduce through automixis, the offspring typically gain two X chromosomes from their mother. Two X chromosomes give rise to only female offspring. What makes Charlotte's parthenogenesis so rare? Well, it's never been observed in her species of round stingrays. In fact, it's rarely observed at all in most animals. There have been some notable cases, but they are hard to prove in the wild. The process is typically observed with captive animals, since there's usually proof that they have not interacted with a male mate. These examples include a zebra shark, a python, and a Komodo dragon. Parthenogenesis has been observed in more than 80 vertebrate species, about half of which are fish or lizards, but it's rare in bigger species. Despite its rarity in complex creatures, parthenogenesis is not an uncommon occurrence on Earth. In fact, animals have reproduced that way for millions of years. It's just usually the smaller, simpler creatures that do. For more advanced animals like vertebrates, Scientists think that the ability to reproduce asexually came about as a last-ditch effort for species facing adverse conditions. That might explain why parthenogenesis is possible in so many desert and island species. If parthenogenesis is a lifeline for a species, why is it not a more common reproduction method for bigger species? It's a fair question, but think about the dangers of inbreeding. An offspring created via parthenogenesis is genetically really similar to its parent. If that occurs repeatedly, over many generations across many members of a community, then their genetic diversity would be very low. And low genetic diversity makes the population more at risk of disease and external pressures from the environment. Unsurprisingly, scientists have observed that species that reproduce via parthenogenesis frequently die out from disease, parasitism, or changes in habitat. This explains why it's not the typical reproductive method for most complex species. That's also not to suggest that all complex species are capable. Humans, or no mammals for that matter, can reproduce via parthenogenesis because unlike simpler organisms, mammals rely on a process called genomic imprinting, which again, bear with the biology here, is a process where the genes from the mom and from the dad are labeled. This means that certain genes are switched on or off depending on the contributing parent. If there were only a single parent, some genes would fail to activate 
altogether, making viable offspring impossible. So what's the status of Charlotte? She's due any day as of the posting of this video and will likely give birth to multiple very small babies. Normal stingray births are weird too, since the female can mate with multiple males and give birth to multiple offspring belonging to different fathers at once. Nature's pretty weird. But at least Charlotte's mystery seems to have been solved, even if scientists still don't really understand what compels parthenogenesis to happen.